Since the release of ChatGPT last December, OpenAI has changed the world and opened the possibilities for developers to create new AI tools and software businesses. For the most part, many of these tech startups that are powered by AI are powered by the very same tools that power ChatGPT, those being GPT-3, GPT-3.5, and now GPT-4. These tools power many of the applications and new AI additions to products that you may be working with. What's going on guys? My name is Josh Mountain. I'm a tech software entrepreneur. And today I'm gonna to be telling you exactly why 99% of the tech startups specifically focused on AI aren't gonna be here tomorrow. And for the hundreds that are around today, there will be dozens tomorrow. As it happens, many of these AI tech startups fail to even accomplish the most basic task of a startup, which is solving a problem. At their core, many of these tech startups focus solely on the AI tools powering them, and not enough on the domain that they operate in. As it turns out, many of these companies don't really focus on a problem to solve. Rather, they go out looking for a problem to solve and come up with a solution before they've even found that problem. And it's exactly this inadequate customer understanding that leads to them producing a feature, producing a platform, or producing a service to the market that the market doesn't want, the market doesn't care for, and certainly not the market will pay for. Startup is just another name for business. And if your AI startup isn't solving a problem, which is what all businesses are supposed to do, well, then you're clearly gonna fail. Even though their AI tool might be cool, if the market isn't willing to pay for what you have to offer, whether that be cool or not, it's gonna cause your company to fail and tech startups are no different. And that's just the problem. They're cool. They're almost too cool. We haven't had ChatGPT in circulation on the world for more than a year's time, and already there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of AI tech startups that all effectively try and do the same thing, which is pipe information into what is essentially ChatGPT. People say it's GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, but effectively they're using the chatbot aspect of GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 to effectively serve their goals. And many investors buy into this hype. I think for a fact that Microsoft is gonna become a dominant superpower in the tech industry, even more so than it is now, because of their billions of dollars invested in OpenAI. But if you're familiar with the phrase, it's easier to get rich during a gold rush by selling shovels, not panning for gold. Well, that's exactly what we're seeing in the tech industry right now, specifically with AI. You see, OpenAI and Microsoft are effectively the ones selling these shovels. They are giving out OpenAI's GPT-3 and GPT-4, which are really, really cool AI tools. But it's those companies that are founded on top of those tools that are the ones panning for gold. It's not gonna matter for OpenAI though. They're still gonna be charging the API fees required to have access to their services and have access to their AI. But for these companies, those ones that are created on top of the tools, they're the ones accepting all the risk. With investors backing AI startups based on hype and not long-term viability, if we don't see that quick return on investment, many of these investors will shrivel up and disappear, as will the hype. And when that happens, many of these startups are gonna fold. And when that happens, I feel like we're gonna see so many AI tech startups disappear off the face of the planet, just like that. But don't you remember? You had NFTs, I had NFTs, celebrities had NFTs, until the hype train ran out and just like that, seemingly overnight, those investable assets became completely worthless because they were only worth as much as somebody was willing to pay for them. And I feel like we're gonna experience something very similar with OpenAI powered tech startups very soon because OpenAI is gonna continue to break in the cash through the door through their API deals, but those tech startups that the tools are based on top of, once that hype runs out, poof, they are gonna disappear. But putting aside the tools that power ChatGPT for a second, for an actual AI startup that is having their own custom models built, funneling that information in and the amount of data that is required to actually generate the results that you're looking for on that is astronomical. Sure, the user interface has become a lot more user-friendly because of tools like ChatGPT. You can easily tell it what to do and type in some information. And ChatGPT is a very useful tool. I use it every single day, but for me, to actually go and train an AI model, that is gonna require so much data that I simply don't have. And many of these tech startups aren't gonna have either. Which leads me back to if you have an ineffective model, meaning you have an ineffective product, meaning you have an ineffective solution, there's gonna be nobody that wants to pay for your tool because you're not gonna be solving a problem. And speaking on experience from this within our own companies, we were able to actually use tech to uplift our business, but the tech wasn't the only thing keeping it up. If we remove the tech, we would be more inefficient, but we would still be able to make money and be profitable. But 
having the tech there wasn't a key necessary requirement to make sure that our company survived. For many of these companies, the tech is the only thing keeping them up. If you remove that technology, I think you'll find for a lot of these companies, if you simply switched off their access to the 3.5 API, the 4 API, and the ChatGPT API, their company would crumble because the only value that it is offering is based on something else, which is something that was developed by OpenAI, not by them. If you can't have a different enough thing to build on top of that, then your tool is kind of just going to fit into a sea of endless tech products all powered by AI, which sure, on the surface level, those are cool. But if you look at companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, are you really going to be able to compete with those massive tech giants with billions of dollars of R&D to waste on AI tools when you simply have something powered by something somebody else built? Probably not. And the field is rapidly evolving. Looking at it from a purely pragmatic standpoint, the exact moment that ChatGPT was released to now, those two AI services are completely different. People didn't know what they could use ChatGPT for when it was originally released. People don't know how they could implement that into their own services, customize it, you know, give it custom instructions. They certainly didn't have GPT-4, which is a much more advanced model to work with. And the situations in which we're actually using it are completely different to when it first launched. People didn't know what the capabilities were. And it's the same thing we're in right now. A year from now, five years from now, we are not capable of predicting what the tech will look like. For most of the things I've talked about so far, these are all things that are to blame on the company. The companies, you know, internally are having these issues or failing to establish a solid business plan or failing to establish any sort of actual value that they can offer on top of just taking the tools from OpenAI, reskinning them or putting something that has really no value on top of that and then just selling it, prepackaging it as their own service. But let's talk about for a moment the things that aren't their fault. The situations that could arise in which through no fault of the company's own, they could crumble and fall and seemingly disappear overnight. And that is because of ethics and morality. Think about if the world suddenly decided that, you know what, the tool or the service or the AI product that you have shouldn't be replacing a human. It is ethically immoral for you to replace a human with that tool. Therefore, nobody should buy your product. Therefore, your product should not exist. Even though I haven't seen this happen to any AI tech startup on a large scale, one of the companies that I fear will become victim to this is called Galileo AI. And you might have heard of it. Galileo AI was shaking up the news a few months ago, promising a new disruptive tool that would effectively render user experience and user interface designers, which is a big portion of my job, completely useless. Galileo AI's solution, simply put, was typing in a prompt and getting a user interface designed by their AI in seconds. Think of it like ChatGPT, except you could type in whatever you want. Say it was a login page with a sign-up sheet and you don't want the specific forms or you, you describe whatever you want to see on that user interface and the app would design it for you just like that. Normally you have to do several rounds of design work, you know, low fidelity mockups, medium fidelity mockups, high fidelity mockups, and testing your designs with users all along the way to make sure that people actually understand how to use what you're designing, but no more. All of those jobs would be rendered completely obsolete because you could simply type in exactly what you want to see and the AI would generate it for you. Now the company hasn't posted anything on their Twitter since like May, but this is one of the companies that I fear will become victim to this because they disappeared and I presume that they're working on the tool actively right now. Let's say for the sake of the argument that Galileo AI releases this six months from now. They release their AI tool to the world and it's as groundbreaking as everyone has expected it to be. You can literally type in anything into it and get a user interface designed in seconds. It is as seamless as they promised. Well, what if the world suddenly decided that, you know what, user interface designers shouldn't be allowed to lose their job to AI and we're just not gonna buy your product. We're gonna shun your product and your product is no longer allowed to exist. Well, seemingly overnight, this company that has released this groundbreaking tech could crumble simply because the world views it as unethical and immoral. Yeah, I'll talk about this one. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about this one. Okay, you know what? I wasn't gonna talk about it, but the elephant in the room when it comes to any startup that is founded on technology, overhype, overvaluation, whatever you wanna call it, a company simply put getting a absolutely egregious amount of money thrown at them from investors thinking that this company is going to be the next billion dollar device, the next billion dollar service, only for it to fail in spectacular fashion. I build the future. And once again, the reason I'm dunking on Juicero is because it is a prime example of a company where if your entire company is based on technology, your technology should at least solve a problem. So I guess my question is, who's going to be left? When the dust settles, when the debris is cleared, 
when the last remaining couple dozen or so big tech startups are remaining that are still powered by AI tools, who are they going to be? Two companies. The main companies that are actually establishing proprietary technology that are not just piggybacking off of the tools built by OpenAI, but taking those tools and then giving their own unique twist on them that actually provides something of value to the market. And the companies that are already doing exactly what they're doing right now, but using those AI tools to supplement themselves. I mean, Salesforce, Grammarly, you know, vidIQ, even something like that. Those companies have all successfully integrated those tech products into their existing services and it's made things better. They haven't used that to completely redefine what their product and value to the market is. They are still offering the exact same value that they've always been offering, but they are now just offering a friendlier user interface and more you know, conversational experience through a tool like ChatGPT's API or GPT-3 or 4, just simply into their platforms. It is not the main service being offered, but it is something of value that props it up. And if you took out those AI tools, if you removed them at the end of the day and they were gone and you never saw them again, those companies would still be thriving and be alive because the main value that they offered was not entirely based on the technology created by somebody else. It was on the technology and the value that they created.